It certainly is snowing outside. This old equipment here is doing just fine. Got uh, got it all wrapped up and light bulbs burning in there. <laughs> okay, let's go into this cozy, warm little shop here. Oh, it's so nice. Really, very nice. Okay, now I'm going to talk about something here that you might find kind of interesting. I get a big kick out of this. A uh, long time ago, um, there's a business here. Uh, it's a centering business. And the owner of it was years ago. Uh, I toured the place uh, from the community college here. And he said to the students, he goes, uh, um, metal is like rubber, just harder. And uh, I don't know if you know about centering, but they take uh, powdered metal and uh, mix it together. They can make all kinds of alloys, uh, make it harder or softer, or heat treatable by adding powdered carbon. So it's kind of interesting you mentioned that. And I found that to be true, that uh, metal's very flexible to an extent and quite a bit like rubber. I'm going to demonstrate it real quick right here with a famous Kurt Weiss. Let's have a look. Okay, this is a genuine Kurt Weiss here. Except no imitations. And you can see how I have it mounted here. Now this is going to uh, make the problem just slightly worse than, mount, than mounting it uh, by the regular holes. I got it mounted here so I could machine uh, with the horizontal spindle. Okay, right here is a 10 thousandths reading indicator. And let's get that thing on zero. Okay, each number is one thousandths. De -de -de -de. Look at that. Very sensitive. Rup, 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 rup. Okay, we'll call that good. Now I got this piece of steel in here. This is like a piece of uh, old one. It, it's from a company here that's uh, long, long gone. Uh, I don't know what it was, but I've been boring holes in it, just testing stuff. So I got that in here. It's just propped up with some aluminum blocks there. Okay, now here's the handle. Okay, now let's watch that indicator with one mighty right hand here. I'm going to tighten it. <laughs> what happened? We got two thousandths and three tenths stretch. Let's pull it back. Watch the rubber action of metal. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's see if we can get two and a half thousandths stretch out of this turkey. <laughs> Okay, as strong as I can, I did it. <laughs> okay, well, you can sweat and you can toil and you can um, trim that thing in the fist you can, but it's still going to stretch on you. <laughs> okay, now, all fun aside, uh, this uh, vice is a very useful tool, but you need to be aware of what I just showed you. Okay. Now, if it was mounted here, it would probably stretch about a half thousandth less, okay? So for jig boring, uh, you try to avoid vices, and if you got to use a vice, then you use something like this. This is a um, Stevens Engineering Torque Limiting Subplate vice and uh, it's mounted to a two inch thick uh, ground steel subplate here it's just a tiny subplate and i use this on the um, jig borer now it's got a clutch here to limit the torque so when you chuck something up and it, you're getting the exact torque it's a slip clutch uh, multi-plate and so uh when you reach the value, it just slips. And you can set it with uh, a hydraulic scale, you know, for uh, the poundage you need. So, well, what do you do? Well, the best thing to do uh, for accuracy is not use a vise. And that's to clamp things down. Um, similar to what I got going here with uh, these fingers for uh, the steady rest. 
and use clamp. And you clamp things down, whether it be that plate for holes or uh, whatever. And you uh, carefully tighten your clamps too. Now I'm just going to drill a hole in this. So it just needs one clamp. I have a little uh, square piece of lead under here. And it just makes a nice clamping situation. It's very little distortion going on compared to grabbing it in a vise. Now I had this grabbed in a vise and I milled the hole in the end. And um, But once I had it in the vise, that's when I, I zeroed it in. Okay, but if it needed to be more accurate than that, I would have better mounted it on V-blocks and, and held it this way. Um, I just kind of wanted to point some of that stuff out. Now, now I'm going to really uh, throw something into uh, the mix here. I'm going to go back over here. <laughs> I love metal. I love working with it. And, and to be successful, you better know the nature of it. Okay, so we're going to get back here. And, uh, okay, it, it looks like, uh, where are we on that? Let me pull it off. Uh, uh. Okay, so it sprung back to zero or pretty close there. The vise didn't bend. So if I wanted to bend this vise, I'd put the torque on it again, uh, like that. And then I take and give this thing a real wallop with a hammer under that stress and it would stay bent to a degree. And if I kept doing that, kept stretching it to that two and a half thousandths and smacking it, it would stay two and a half thousandths. It's, uh, it's sort of like uh, you can put pressure on metal like that and uh, the old timers call it putting pressure on it and setting it. You smack it with a hammer under pressure, okay, and it stays bent. Then you take the pressure off and you smack it again and that relieves the, um, the stress. And it'll bend back to, towards being straight, but not all the way. So you gotta, you got to bend it, set it, Take the pressure off, relieve it, bend it again, smack it, take the pressure off, and you keep doing that, and you can straighten something or slightly bend something that'll stay that way. I thought you might get a kick out of that. Okay, now, the difference between the, the milling machine here can be seen on the dials, okay? Now, I stretched that two thousandths, two and a half thousandths. Let's look at the dials on this milling machine. They read in one thousandths. And I'll tell you what, these are nice dials on this uh, brown and sharp, nice adjusters. They read in one thousandths, a hundred thousandths in a turn on the knee, and it's uh, at least two hundred thousandths, two hundred and fifty uh, one turn on the uh, uh, x-axis and I believe it's 100 on the y-axis so we get over here to uh, the jig boring machine and we can see that um, the uh, it's 100 uh, thousandths per turn and then it's got a vernier here to read in tenths of a thousandths so right off the bat the jig bore discrimination is 10 times more accurate than the milling machine. But the mil milling machine is a very, very important item and, uh, and uh, uh, to get you to the point to use the jig board machine. Because we need the milling machine to rough out the pieces for finishing on the jig board machine. Okay? All right, I'll be back. I'm going to drill some holes here. And uh, this is the setup I've got. And uh, I've got a, um, a, a ground piece of steel in this table slot here. And I got this table trammed into the machine so it's easy for me to clamp this on some V-blocks, slide it against that uh, stop, and then clamp it. 
And of course, I, I showed in an earlier um, video how I uh, came to uh, level this or index it. Okay, we'll be back soon.